Hello, in this video I'm going to review this lens warmer that I recently got from Amazon, but it ain't gonna be no ordinary review because here I'm going to go through every single detail about this device, including physical dimensions and lens compatibility, temperature responses as a function of time in different modes using a multimeter, power consumption, how long does it take to actually remove condensation from an already fogged up lens and also what is the optimal way to use this accessory anyway. Ok, so without any further ado, let's get started. Ok, so before we begin, let me actually quickly remind what is the purpose of using a lens warmer anyway and why is it such a lifesaver in those situations. So if you are shooting at night at extended periods of time, think about astrophotography, deep sky astrophotography where you are out with your lens or a telescope for a long periods of time, couple of hours you need to collect a lot of light, a lot of data to work with in post production, or maybe you are making something like a Milky Way time lapse throughout the entire night or maybe even a regular time lapse during cold or called days on a summer because on those days chances are that on the front element of the lens there will be a little bit of condensation piling up on the front element of your lens and this condensation will fog up your images and basically ruin every single exposure from that moment on in such a time lapse or such a shoot and also if you're doing this on a cold day like think about sub-zero temperatures in winter chances are that they will actually be frosting forming on the front element of your lens so in order to remove that and get rid of of all those problems, we just apply a lens warmer around the lens here to keep the front element warm and keep all the condensation and frosting off the front element of the lens, keep our images clean and our shoot successful. So the lens warmer that I got is, uh, the brand name is Kuwu. Uh, I got this from Amazon, like I uh, told you before, this costed like 17 bucks, I think this is an excellent value for money. And yeah, let's start by taking a look at what's inside the box. So when we open the box, we find our device packed in a nice Ziploc bag and then there's an instruction manual beneath it. Inside the Ziploc bag, there's the main unit of the heater with a USB type A cable running from it. And then there's also this piece of cable, which looks like a USB type A extension cord, but it has this controller in the middle. And this is what we'll use in order to turn on our device and set it to one of the three operational modes. Then you plug this end of the cable into this piece with the controller and then you plug the end of the controller into a power bank and that way you take your lens and you wrap this strap around the front element of your lens and that way you can run this in the field. The USB type A plug is a universal plug that you can use with pretty much any power bank. The lens warmer itself is made out of very very soft material. There's literally no way to damage your telescope or your lens by wrapping it around. The material is very soft and there is a patch of velcro on one side and the other side of this strap is made from such a material that any part of this material will attach to this velcro patch. So you can basically make it any size you want. You can make it smaller like this, wraps around, you could make it bigger like this, wraps around nicely. So it's pretty much a universal fit when it comes to lenses or telescopes. And the length of this strip itself is 48 centimeters or 18 inches. This is what I have measured myself. And the length of this cable, this cable is pretty long. The length of this cable is one and a half meters or five feet. And also the length of this extension cord with the, with the controller is another like 80 centimeters or like almost three feet. So I think the total length of those cords combined definitely give you enough room to conveniently run it from your telescope or a lens down to the backpack on the foot of the tripod or maybe this one of these pouches that you attach to one of the legs of the tripod. So the first thing that I tested about this device is I wanted to see how much time does it take to actually remove condensation from an already fogged up lens. So what I did is I left my lens, this one, this is the Canon 70-300L, I left it overnight outside in the cold on the cold night and then I brought it inside my apartment which immediately caused the condensation to form on the front element of the lens and this is pretty much how the condensation was being removed as you can see in this time lapse you have the time progression at the bottom and it took around 10 minutes to completely remove condensation from my lens and I was using the second mode the mode 2 which is the one with the middle temperature mode 1 is the lowest final temperature mode 2 is the middle one and mode 3 is the highest one and as the manual suggests those three modes 
operate in the temperature range of 40 to 70 degrees Celsius and I will get into that in just a second what is the final temperature in any of those three modes. And as you can see it takes a while to completely remove condensation so I was a little bit of disappointed by this. I was hoping to get it done way way faster so definitely you don't want to wait until the condensation forms on your lens or telescope. You want to run this device beforehand to actually prevent anything like this to form in the first place. But it made me curious and I was really wondering how long does it take to heat up this lens and what is like the temperature response and by that I mean if you plot it out like the time on the x-axis and the temperature on the y-axis what would be the chart of the temperature as a function of time. So I took my multimeter which is right here and I have set up a very simple testing environment. I have just taken this temperature probe that is right here and I sticked it in the middle between the lens warmer and the lens and I kept it running. And as you can see in this time lapse it really takes a while in order to heat this up and in mode 1 the final temperature that this device would reach is around 50 degrees Celsius which is around 120 degrees Fahrenheit but it really really takes a long time in order to reach to this 50 degrees. So yeah it took a long time and then I flipped it to mode 2. I went it around 10 or 15 minutes and it reached around 60 degrees Celsius and then I flip it to mode 3 and then it even crossed the higher end of the range that was stated in the manual which was 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit and I think this temperature is way way more that you would ever need for the purpose of removing condensation or frosting from the front element of the lens. I think the temperature of 40 50 degrees Celsius is definitely more than enough but you know I was curious how this would behave in different modes. And then I remembered something because in college I was actually studying control engineering and robotics and in a lot of our classes we were designing this like uh, control circuits where for instance you have a thermal element like this and you want to keep it at exactly 20 degrees Celsius on the output and we were designing this kind of a system that would keep this device at 20 degrees Celsius. So what should be the voltage at the input to have exactly 20 degrees at the output. And then I remembered that pretty much every thermal element when you provide it with energy Energy, its response will be kind of inertial. It looks like this. It's not a straight line that the time that passed is proportional to the temperature difference. It has inertia which means that it is going fast at the beginning and then it's getting slower and slower and slower and asymptotically it reaches its final temperature. Wait let me actually draw this out for you guys. So we have a chart right here. We have the time axis, we have the temperature axis and in the low mode the response looks something like this and in mode 3 where the final temperature is the highest it should immediately start to go higher right from the get-go and then at this point I can pretty much switch to mode 1 and then it will cool down and kind of stabilize around 40 or 50 degrees. So that was my theory and this is what I came back the next day to measure. It. So I set up the exact same testing environment with the multimeter and this time I heated it up from the cold right on the mode 3 because I wanted to compare these responses from cold to mode 1 final temperature and from the cold in mode 3 final temperature. So what I did is actually I looked at the footage meticulously. I have input this data in a table in the numbers app on my macOS which is like an Excel on Microsoft kind of counterpart and then I have plotted out those two charts and as you can see this is exactly behaving like I was assuming the response is inertial so what you can do if you forgot to turn it on and you want to remove condensation quickly you can actually switch it to mode 3 wait about five minutes and then switch it to mode 1. This kind of maneuver will ensure that the condensation will be removed as fast as possible. It will drain a little bit of more battery at the beginning probably but then it will be the fastest route. But probably the best approach to this device would be to think about turning it on beforehand, maybe even turn it on as you are approaching your final location in your car or maybe at the very beginning of your setup if you're doing like astrophotography or something like this. Turn it on and then as you're mounting everything on your rig, the tracker, the lens, telescope, whatever, finding your target, it will give it plenty of time to actually heat up so then when you wrap it around the lens it will be already warm and already functioning properly. And when it comes to power consumption, the manual states, this is the little manual, it's all Chinese, this, uh, this Ku brand by the way is a complete Chinese knockoff, you know, everything is Chinese here and even the, <laughs> the signs on those buttons are in Chinese, but it's, it's pretty intuitive, you know, mode 1 on the bottom, mode 2 in the middle and mode 3 at the top, so 
Yeah, but like I said, you know, it's excellent value for money, I think. And in this manual, you can read that the power consumption of this device is 7 watts. And because you connect it to a USB power bank, then the nominal voltage is 5 volts. So if you take 7 watts of power and divide it by 5 volts, you get around 1.4 amperes. And this is the current that this guy is draining. And if you take, for instance, this power bank that I got, this is a power bank from Samsung. I can highly recommend that as well. By the way, links to all of those products, the power bank, the lens warmer, and everything that I use here in this setup will be linked down below in the description. Those are links to Amazon, so definitely check them out. This power bank that I have has 10,000 milliampere hours, and that basically means that this is like 10 ampere hours. So if I plug it in on full blast to this lens warmer, this will drain from 10 amp hours to 1.4 amperes per hour, so around 7-ish, 7 and something hours of constant runtime. And I think, I'm not sure because I haven't tested this myself, this would be a very, very long test to do. I think the 7 watts is on the highest temperature setting, so I think on the lowest temperature settings, if this was proportional to the final temperatures that I have measured, it should be around 5 watts of power. So with 5 watts and 5 volts, this would give you one ampere, so with 10 amp hours on the power bank, it would give you a constant runtime of 10 hours, which I think is plenty in most applications. You know, if you are doing a Milky Way time lapse throughout the night, chances are that the dark night will be uh, shorter than 10 hours. And like I mentioned in the beginning, the price of this device is 17 US dollars on Amazon. There is also a second variant where the strap is a little bit thicker, so you can also check that out. But I think this one is also suitable for like big full blast telescopes and what you want to do is that you want to wrap it around the front element of your lens you want to wrap it around as much to the front as possible because you don't want the camera to necessarily be heated up because the cameras like to be actually cool the camera sensors operate way better when they are cold so you don't want to heat up the camera you just want to heat up the lens and the front element is the most susceptible to condensation or frosting so just wrap it around here and then you are good to go all right that's basically everything that i have for you in this video Video. If you liked it, definitely hit that like button down below. I would really appreciate it. Also, check out my channel. I have already a bunch of videos about astrophotography, photography, filmmaking, all the stuff that revolves around things you can do with your camera. So you can probably find some interesting stuff there already. And also consider subscribing to my channel because I post new videos pretty much every single week. So if you don't want to miss out on future videos, definitely hit the subscribe button and comment down below if you have any questions, maybe any recommendations, or if any part of the video is confusing to you, definitely don't hesitate. Hit me up in the comments. And right now, check out these two videos. This might be interesting to you as well. See you next time, hopefully, and bye-bye.